Welcome everyone. Let's talk about hypertensive emergencies. Hypertensive emergency is any form of high blood pressure more than 180 over 120 millimeter mercury when it's associated with acute progressive end organ damage. I mean it's an acute onset, new and progressively increasing heart, kidney, brain and eyes uh, damage. While hypertensive urgency, now they also call it asymptomatic hypertension, asymptomatic high blood pressure more than 180 over 120, when there is no evidence of acute progressive end organ damage. If the, even if the patient is having pre-existing end organ involvement. Example, even if the patient is previously having heart failure, but now he just have a very, very high blood pressure without evidence of new symptoms. The differentiation is important because hypertensive emergency require rapid reduction of the blood pressure because uh, to, uh, to minimize the end organ damage, while in contrast hypertensive urgency or asymptomatic one do not rapidly reduce the blood pressure because many of them they are only a physiological response. For example, uh, in a patient with acute ischemic stroke, so let's say this is brain, this is brain, there is a, an ischemia to this area. Surrounding the area is an area with low perfusion, call it penumbra. If this patient have a stroke, there will be increased blood pressure physiologically in order to provide good perfusion to this penumbra to prevent death of that tissue. While if reduce the blood pressure rapidly, it leads to um, it leads to reduction of the blood flow and death of that penumbra and increasing the degree of the stroke. So rapid blood pressure reduction in such patients with urgency may lead to harm of cardiac renal cerebral perfusion. We have other terms like malignant hypertension and accelerated hypertension when there is high blood pressure plus retinal hemorrhage, exudate papillodema, this can be only detected by using ophthalmoscope. Accelerated hypertension when there is all, the, all these problems without papillodema. Anyhow, these are rare, but if there is malignant and accelerated hypertension, uh, it means that there might be associated acute uh, end organ damage. What are the conditions that define hypertensive emergency? So, in the brain, we have hypertensive encephalopathy, in which the patient having severe headache, plus blurred vision, plus confusion, maybe um, coma, convulsion, and sometimes neurological deficit. Intracranial hemorrhage, I mean, if a patient is having hemorrhagic stroke. The patient have unilateral weakness, headache, vomiting, and also on the CT scan there is hemorrhage. So these are the brain damages. Acute left ventricular failure, acute myocardial infarction, dissection of aorta. These are related to cardiovascular system. Um, so acute left ventricular failure means heart failure. The patient presented with shortness of breath, orthopnea, leg edema, and also by basal crackles on examination. This is acute heart failure or pulmonary edema. Acute myocardial infarction or ischemia, the patient is having very high blood pressure, plus chest pain, increase with exertion, relief with rest, radiate to shoulder, ECG change, and also uh, troponin release. So all these may uh, indicate that the patient is having acute myocardial infarction. So in the setting of high blood pressure in this condition, it's regarded as emergency hypertension. Dissection of aorta, the patient is having ripping or stabbing chest pain, radiated to back, associated with differences of blood pressure between the arms. And when you do a chest x-ray, there is widening of the mediastinum. So this is dissection of aorta. High blood pressure should be reduced rapidly because this is emergency. Acute kidney injury, the patient have decreased urine output and, uh, re and, and disturbance in the um, renal function test. Eclampsia, 
the patient is pregnant more than 24 weeks usually they have high blood pressure and they have convulsion so this is eclampsia causes of hypertension most of the hypertensions they have no specific cause it is called essential hypertension about 90 to 95 percent of people they only have essential hypertension there is no cause behind them only about 10 percent they have causes so what are the possible causes it could be renal could be arterial disease like coarctation of aorta endocrine disease like pheochromocytoma Crohn's disease Cushing syndrome some drugs like cocaine amphetamine contraceptive pulse steroids can elevate the blood pressure as we said most of the cases they are having no definitive cause call it essential hypertension no specific cause but there might be associated risk factor for example the patient is elderly having family history and they are obese taking a lot of salt and smoking and they are hyperlipidemic they are some form of um, metabolic syndrome most hypertensive emergencies occur in patients with known hypertension so the patient is already having hypertension but they are not compliant to their treatment or they are taking their drug but the drug is inadequate hypertensive emergency is thought to be triggered by uh, abrupt sudden raise in systemic vascular resistance leading to a lot of uh, disturbance of autoregulatory mechanisms in the brain in cardiovascular system in every area we talked about the symptoms so, so example a chest pain might be due to myocardial ischemia but or it might be high uh, due to due to aortic dissection a shortness of breath might be due to pulmonary edema and so on what are the investigations you do for such patients usually no investigation needed if the patient is having no symptom but you may do an ECG uh, to look for ischemia infarction left ventricular hypertrophy or strain chest x-ray to, to look for signs of pulmonary edema and also widening of the mediastinum may suggest aortic dissection uh, uh, looking for evidence of acute kidney injury uh, do a renal function test urinalysis uh, to see if there is hematuria proteinuria and also um, the pregnancy status of the patient especially of any female of child bearing age sometimes hemolytic anemia can be defined by um, by uh, see complete blood count ct scan uh, you may do a ct scan of aorta if the patient is having uh, severe chest pain and signs of aortic dissection CT scan of the head if you suspect it, hemorrhage of the brain. For hypertensive urgency, or it is called now, they call it asymptomatic high blood pressure. When there is significant high blood pressure, more than 120, or more than 180 over 120, and there is no end organ damage, it is not an emergency. You have to re refer the patient for the GP to monitor and treat their hypertension it is essential to tell you about something that most patients is coming to the emergency department when they have a very high blood pressure just let them to rest and admit the patient uh, for a few minutes 10 to 15 minutes then check their blood pressure again usually their blood pressure reduces dramatically may i have seen many patients with blood pressure 180 or 1 or 200 and after 10 minutes, you need to check their blood pressure. It becomes 160 or 150, even without, without any treatment. Sometimes the patient is having pain. You manage the pain and their blood pressure will improve. For true hypertensive emergency, when, the, when you see that the patient has high blood pressure plus end organ damage, um, you have to... Uh, prevent sudden drops in blood pressure uh, because sudden blood pressure reduction may compromise vital organs uh, perfusion uh, so what you do is that you usually measure the mean arterial pressure mean arterial pressure is measured by 
2 diastolic plus systolic divided by 3. Uh, so this mean arterial pressure should be reduced by 25%. Example, if their mean arterial pressure is 100, you reduce it to 75 uh, within a two hour period. Previously it was one hour, nowadays it is two hour period. It, it is different between different types of hypertensive emergency. For example, a patient with aortic dissection, you may reduce the blood pressure even to normal blood pressure, less than normal, to prevent bleeding. In order to achieve a controlled reduction in blood pressure, you have to use an IV titratable short-acting antihypertensive. There are many, many uh, antihypertensive drugs, but most commonly used um, IV drugs or drugs which are used in our locality for hypertensive emergency are labitolol, nitratus, hydralazine. Nitroprocyte is usually not available. Labitolol is most commonly used for hypertensive brain emergencies. There is brain hemorrhage, there is a uh, encephalopathy. So it is a mixed alpha and beta blocker. Uh, it also causes vasodilatation. Um, it's usually not associated with reduced cerebral blood flow. So it's a good, a very good choice for hypertensive stroke syndromes. The ampule is usually contains 20 ml, which uh, contains 100 milligram. You have to give, uh, you have to start with 20 milligram or formal, you can repeat it every 10 minutes, okay? And you can double the dose if you didn't get enough response. The maximum dose is 300 milligram, or it is, a, a, you just use a three VL or three ampoule. Monitor blood pressure every 10 minutes. Be, 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 before giving further doses, you have to uh, measure the blood pressure. If you didn't get your target, give more dose. Nitrates, the nitrates is usually 0.4 or 0.5 milligram a sublingual tablet and we also having IV forms of uh, nitrate. It is a good vasodilator and uh, it improves the perfusion to the coronary vessels. Um, the problem of it is that the dose is very unpredictable. That's why the, there is a wide range of dose between 5 to 200 microgram per minute. Uh, so the titration of the dose is somewhat difficult compared to labitolol and other drugs. We have hydralazine, also called it aprisoline. The hydralazine, we have tabs as well. And we have uh, ampule, uh, which can be used IV or IM. The dose is usually... Uh, you have to give 5 mg uh, intravenous or intramuscular, then 10 mg every 30 minutes until you get your target of blood pressure reduction. Nitroprusside also is a good choice for most hypertensive emergencies. Um, it's a potent vasodilator reducing preload afterload, uh, but it is usually not available in our hospitals. So this, is, this was for um, hypertensive emergency. What about urgencies? What are the drugs that you may give it in the emergency department? It is ideal to send these patients to, um, to the GP or to the internal medicine doctor and tell them that your blood pressure does not need rapid reduction. Rapid reduction may lead to more harm. But if uh, you are not sure or you are, uh, or if the patient is <coughs> uh, not happy with that, you may give <coughs> one of these drugs. A, B, C, D. A, example, AC inhibitor or uh, angiotensin receptor blockers. AC inhibitor, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, example, captopril. The captopril was the first IC inhibitor that produces it. It's the mother of IC inhibitor. You can give a dose of 25 to 50 milligram, one by two or one by three. It's rapid onset, short acting, typical for hypertensive emergency. Lisinopril, five to 10 milligram. Also, we have other uh, IC inhibitors. We don't need to mention all of them. Uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, example, Valsartan, can be used in a dose of 80 to 160 milligram, one by one or one by two. Uh, it's a, sorry, one by one. 
candy sartan, the dose is 8 to uh, 16 milligram. So we have other agents like Olmisartan, Telmisartan, Erbisartan. Uh, you don't need to cover all of them, just you are happy with one or two of this IC inhibitor or ARB. The most common side effect of IC inhibitor is cough. Um, that's why, um, especially dry cough at night, you have to convert it to IRB. Beta blockers like metoprolol, bisoprolol, atinolol, metoprolol in a dose of the, the tab is 25 to 50 milligram one by one. Uh, bisoprolol 5 milligram one by one, atinolol 50 to 100 milligram one by one. So it is typical for hypertensive urgency because it also reduces the anxiety, reduces tachycardia, and hence it reduces the blood pressure. So patients who are anxious of their blood pressure, if you give them beta blocker, it would be a very typical choice. Calcium channel blocker like amlodipine is very safe, can be used for most patients with even any comorbidity. Uh, the problem of beta blocker is that it cannot be used for patients with bradycardia and uh, acute heart failure also you have to consider it as emergency. But uh, some patients with asthma, mm, uh, you, you, you may not happy to give some drugs, example, uh, metop, example, uh, propranolol. Diuretic, diuretic is, uh, example, thiazide, hydrochlorothiazide. Usually hydrochlorothiazide in a dose of 25 to 100 milligram, uh, but usually hydrochlorothiazide is given in combination to AC inhibitor or to beta blocker or to, or to calcium channel blocker. Loop diuretic like Lazicus, uh, or, or the scientific name is furosemide. The, the tab is usually 40 milligram, uh, can be given, but it induces diuresis. So these are the common agents used for hypertensive urgency. Thank you.